All right, good evening and welcome to Fantastic Dimensions. We're playing a little one shot today from Fierce Sharp Little Needles by Stygian and Fox Publishing. The scenario is called Do Not Call Up That Which You Cannot Put Down. I've got four players here with me today. Um, a couple of uh, newbies from my table that uh, I've not played with before, so I'm looking forward to to that. And um, so friends, new and old. Um, basically, the uh, introduction is it's a great white shark tagging season off the Massachusetts coast. Um, and you will all be going uh, to sea on a 42 foot research vessel, along with its captain, pilot and uh, well, one of you is the pilot, actually. Captain, pilot, and um, and a marine biologist, a professional marine biologist, um, to do some uh, great white shark tagging, for sure. And uh, so we'll go ahead and introduce your characters. I'll call you guys out by player name, uh, one by one. That way we're not tripping over each other. And just uh, tell us who you're playing. So I will start with uh, David. And you were probably muted, Dave. I got it. Here we go. Um, my name is Stephen David May. I am a marine researcher, or marine uh, biologist, a researcher, age 23. I'm fascinated by sharks in the sea. And I am just an average, average college dude. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, currently reside in Salem. And I'm super excited to get on this boat and get up close to a great white. That's Excellent. my guy. Very good. Next, we'll go with. Uh, next, I'll hit the mute button. There we go. And we'll go with Josh. Tell us uh, about your character over here. Uh, I'm uh, playing Jia Sung. She's a 21 year old marine biology student. And she's kind of just taken up this opportunity to just see great white sharks. She wants to see what they're like, study them properly. And this is a good way. To start there, she's like fun loving, charming girl. That's it. Perfect. And next, then, will be Peter. Yeah. Okay, uh, good evening. <clears throat> I'm, um, I'll be playing Luther Z. Bone. Wants to thank all of you for making this fishing trip tax deductible. I'm the owner and investor in this, uh, of this wonderful uh, seafaring enterprise. And I'm looking forward to having a wonderful sea trip, uh, doing a lot of fishing while you guys do whatever it is you want to do something with sharks. Uh, but I'll be fishing. And by the way, if you are working for an institution, uh, the boat is my property. If I understand, um, I think it's my property. Correct, Ian? Uh, yeah, correct. You you have um, you own the boat. Good. So and you pay, uh, you want... pay the captain and the um, and and the the pilot and the marine biologist. Of course, she rents from you for your services. Um, you know, so that she can do her research. That makes sense. That does make sense. Perfect. Uh, well, that's that's basically it. So, looking forward to fishing. Excellent. And then, last but not least, uh, whoops, the side. It would be Lee. Okay. Hey, fellas. My name is Doug, Doug McCure. So I'm an ex-Navy guy. I've been a um, sports fisherman, ran a small charter, fish, uh, charter fishing business, and I'm kind of a reformed. Um, so I'm pretty new to conservation, but I'm kind of making up for bad time spent hunting these guys. So I'm sort of a pilot of a ship as well. So I get to do a lot of the kind of a, the, more, the more sort of basic um, the, the basic sort of pilot another ship when the captain's not free or he's got other duties. Excellent. But yeah, nice to be working with you all. All right, very good. Cool. So you are all um, looking forward to this educational adventure of tagging sharks, um, oh, spe specifically educational for the students, of course. Um, maybe Luther, if he pays attention, he might learn a little something about what his uh, what the people on his payroll do with this uh, with this boat. <laughs> He's going to have a lot of fun trying to catch fish when sharks are in the water, for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and Doug, for Doug, I mean, I guess it's it's a day of work, but uh, yeah. Uh, perhaps in Doug's case, you may not want it to be too adventurous because uh, sometimes adventures at sea are not uh, really what you're looking for. Um, 
you kind of probably appreciate the status quo to some extent if you've ever been trapped in a storm at sea or anything of that sort so exactly. which i'm sure you have so you have uh, gathered it is a fine morning uh summer morning at salem's pickering wharf captain david mascari uh marine biologist dr aaron howie and your pilot um, and conservationist doug um, are getting the boat ready um, as you kind of head out, uh, head out onto the docks themselves, or onto the wharf itself, I should say, uh, Stephen and Jia Sung and Luther. Um, as you're kind of walking along the wharf, approaching your boat for the day. Um, actually, before we get to that, I should say, I would like all four of you to give me some knowledge rolls, which is uh, just rolling against your education. Well, that's a good start. A six. Wow. <laughs> Gia Sung no, is up on the gas. No, 93. I missed no. something. Doug, Doug has been just too busy working and hasn't heard the uh, oh. the gossip, I suppose. I don't like that I started so good because that means it's going to get worse. <laughs> yep. Nobody Double O. 100. Whoa. Steven <laughs> is oblivious. He's uh, distracted by something. And Luther? Failed completely. Failed completely. So really, uh, just Gia is the only one. You've heard um, scattered like media reports recently that some of the big sharks in these waters have been found dead. Um, it's currently uncertain as to what is killing sharks. Um, speculation could be disease, um, some predator of some sort, or uh, some other heretofore unknown factor. Um, more specifically, there have been some recent reports that have speculated a rogue great white shark is hunting others of its kind. None of this, of course, has been verified or confirmed, though. Um, in fact, there, there, you even saw one this uh, very morning on one of the more um, sensationalist news media outlets that uh, speculated an undocumented pod of orcas is behind the desk, orcas being um, uh, killer whales, if you're not familiar with the term. Um, orcas are uncommon, but not entirely unheard of in these waters off the coast of Massachusetts. But that brings us to the uh, the wharf as you're approaching the, uh, the boat. Um, as you're uh, as you're approaching, you're accosted by a disheveled looking drunkard, kind of a hobo looking gentleman. Um, obviously hasn't shaved for several days, at least very scraggly little beard going on. Um, his clothes are, are filthy and don't look entirely dry. And, uh, he smells rather foul as he approaches you and says, he grabs onto your arm, Gia, and says, don't go out there. Uh, get away from me. Oh, oh God. No, I'm oh, telling oh, you, oh, don't, oh. don't go oh. out there. Someone help me. This, get, no. Get away. I'd like Thank to shove me. the drunk away from the lovely, distracting Gia. It's like, hey, dude, keep your hands to yourself. Sure. He um, shows a surprising amount of balance. And um, as you kind of push him back, he's not expecting it at first, but he, he maintains his balance. He comes right back up at you. Hands up, though. He doesn't swing at you. He says, no, no, we went out there and it got us. The eye. The eye. All right. I'm calling the cops. Anyone... Uh... I'm dialing 911. There's clearly a, there's a vagrant has sneaked into my private uh, boat yard. Is this um is this a local boy, Ian? Is he somebody who's around, we've seen around the decks before, or I've seen around the decks before? No, actually, he's not like a regular. You don't uh, you don't recognize him at all. But you can all make psychology rolls since he's got all of your attention. Oh, Avil. Yeah, 22. Yeah. That's a pass for Doug, yeah. yeah. I'm too scared of him to success. Maybe you're cowering behind Steven. And Luther yeah. also makes success. Yeah. So I Luther fail and... miserably as I grab Gia close to me. And now we know it was distracting Steven. So Luther and Doug, you can both tell this man is inebriated, but he's also sincere. Okay. You suspect he may not be entirely mentally stable. No surprise, mm. I suppose, but. Nope. 
anyway, he uh, realizes that you're not listening to him, and he uh, turns and then starts to to walk away, uh, sobbing and mumbling to himself as he staggers off down the wharf. Is now, it, is there a, sorry, uh, is there a bar bar on the wharf? Is it kind of a? Does he look like he's heading anywhere something particular? Or? There is a bar on the wharf. However, it's um, well. You know, it's the kind of people that drink at the wharf bar are usually like yacht owners and such. Oh, okay. He's not the usual kind of clientele. No, I guess not. Okay. But I would like you to make um, knowledge rolls. Again, same. So education. Okay. Yeah. 25. So uh, fail. Yeah. Success, success. fail again. Steven, any luck this time? That's just a simple pass. I passed it. Okay, well, we needed a hard pass. Who got a hard pass? Anybody get half or better on their education? No. No. no? Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Doug did. 25, yeah. I'm going to, yeah. Doug, as you're trying to think, like, what's this guy doing in the area? You know, like, he doesn't look like one of the usuals. He doesn't look like somebody who would normally be drinking at the wharf bar. And then you recall a fishing boat capsizing off of Cape Ann last month. And all hands were lost except for one fisherman, a gentleman by the name of Mike Wall of Salem, who was rescued by the Coast Guard. This gentleman looks like a rundown version, maybe, of that, the man from that photo that you saw. You think this might be the same gentleman. Um, you made a hard success, too. So, yeah, you recall that when questioned, uh, Wall had said that they had hooked a sea monster but the thing was so big that it wrecked their boat, taking everyone with it except for himself. Authorities, uh, of course, dismissed his outlandish claim, and uh, nothing was said of the man after that. It looks like he's fallen on some pretty hard times. Yeah, definitely. I'll call, him, call him across. Hey, Mike, are you okay? He doesn't respond to his name. He just continues staggering down the wharf and, and sobbing. Okay. Well, I'll shrug and get back on when the duty's prepping the ship. Mm -hmm. I I kind of just twizzle my hair and uh, look at Stephen and go, "Oh, thank you." That's quite all right, ma'am, as long as you're safe. Give her the look, grab the stuff, start heading on the ship. So as uh, as Doug is preparing the ship for uh, departure, Captain uh, Mascari and Doctor Howie welcome the three of you aboard the Wave Dancer. It's a 42-foot research vessel. Um, you know, they make uh, introductions and go over the basic safety procedures, of course, um, as, you, as you board, talking about the, uh, you know, the purpose of we wearing the life vests. You, you, uh, you will be required to wear life vests, Stephen, uh, Gia, and Luther, for sure, um, because you're not a normal crew on the boat. Um, you, the captain. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, the captain's wearing one, and so is um, uh, Doctor Howie. I don't know about Doug. Doug, do you wear a life vest as well, or if everybody yeah, else sure. is wearing one? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Absolutely. Right. Doctor Howie is. Um, she's younger. But, uh, you know, you figure she might be in her early 30s, late 20s, maybe. Um, kind of a kind of plain to almost homely looking young lady. Um, keeps her hair cut short. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's not particularly um, extraordinary in any way otherwise other than of course the fact that she is a professional marine biologist which may uh, hold some um, sway for Stephen and Gia who are marine biology students of course. Ian have we heard uh, in our uh, college circles have we heard of this woman before have, have we read her in a scientific journal or or perhaps seen her at our colleges? Um, yeah you know what she probably does come to the college occasionally and and she probably has made some kind of presentations or something that you've seen she is a local area uh, marine biologist works out of Salem okay. um, 
she was not educated at the same college you're going to, however. But yeah. She went to college uh, in Florida. Well, I'm just some guy from Cleveland, and that sounds incredibly exotic to me. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay. Um, so you can board, and the ship will depart and start heading out to sea. Uh, you'll be going pretty far out, of course, because you want to get the uh, the Great Whites there. Of course, they might approach shore sometimes, but they're definitely deep water sharks. Uh, they get pretty large. Of course, Dr. Howie will go over the uh, safety um, precautions and, and duties and stuff regarding um, handling and tagging of sharks, too. Um, your primary task, Stephen and Gia, will be to uh, basically dump buckets of chum into the water and to, to set out the uh, the tuna bait traps. Um, I think it's tuna they use. It might be another type of fish. I'll, I'll double check that, but it'll come up when we get there. Um, but yeah, that'll be your, your primary task. Um, and then um, she'll show you how to use, uh, what are those hooks called? Um, the gaff. gaffs. Yeah, she'll show you how to use the, the, the long pulled gaffs and um, how to, you know, you know, what the identifier tags look like. Um, she will probably handle the actual tagging herself, but you, she'll show you guys how the tags work and how you can, uh, you know, identify a shark using the uh, identifier tags, um, yeah, things of that sort. So as the boat, uh, yeah, begins heading out to sea, um, your primary purpose is going to be to identify previously tagged great white sharks and possibly tag any that you come across um, that aren't tagged, you know, heretofore unknown uh, to the program, of course. So you slip past Beverly and out past uh, Kingsport's head and start moving out into deeper waters as the coastline soon becomes just a thin strip of gray in the distance behind you. Dr. Howie takes a look and says, well, if uh, you're ready, I suppose um, while this is going on, Luther, are you actually fishing off the uh, near the back of the boat or something? Or yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just setting up my line and uh, grabbing some beers for my cooler and getting ready for a nice long fishing expedition. Doctor Howie frowns um, at the beer cooler. However, you being the financier of her <laughs> uh, of her uh, program, uh, she's definitely yeah. not going to say anything to you about it. Although internally, she's thinking you're setting a very poor example for the marine biology students. Yeah. She may Water. go over, make, make a special point during the safety um, um, precautions lecture about the dangers of drinking at sea. Uh, how when you're out under the sun <laughs> on the water, alcohol affects you much uh, quicker and more powerfully. Yeah. Yep. But. That's what we're here for. So. So while as you fish and as uh, as Doug kind of brings the boat to a uh, a stop, she says, "Well, it's time to call up our friends." And she uh, starts passing out the uh, copious amounts of frothy red chum, you know, the buckets, and uh, yeah, it's tuna for sure, bait crates as well. Mm -hmm. So you can set about putting those out, dumping chum directly into the water and setting out the, the, the tuna baits, uh, the, the bait crates, sorry, tuna bait crates. Yeah. Oh, Stephen is eagerly dumping it out in his young college enthusiasm. Oh, this, this is, is so fantastic for him. This is so exciting. Oh, oh Gia, isn't this, isn't this amazing? Oh, it's <laughs> so, My Lord. I'm, I've been looking forward to this ever since I chose to do it. Oh, it's so exciting. Ian, um, I have a question. Um, on the ship uh, we're on, um, how many roughly are, are there other? How many other crewmen are on the ship? Actual crewmen? None. That's it. None. Just us. It's it's a boat. It's a, it, to call it a ship is, is eh. generous. Um, yeah, it's a forty-two <laughs> footer. Um, let's see here. Actually, um, who? I can show you now. This is not your boat, but it would be a similar boat. Um, let me just touch something here. I think I have a, an example I put up in the Facebook. Group I saw that the, in the, the event at one point. 
Oh, yeah. I don't seem to have it here, actually. Did I save it on my, desk, on my desktop? Nope, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's only a 42-footer, which isn't very large for research vessels. It's for a small research program, small team. Um, if you think about, like, kind of a, a, a small, like, four-person maybe three or four person um, recreational boat you might take out to do a little fishing out a, a couple mm -hmm. miles offshore. So that'd be maybe 17 to 24 foot usually. Okay. So it's a little bigger than that. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are a total of six of you here. Yeah. Two students, the financier, the pilot, the captain, and of course the, uh, the actual scientist. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Okay. I'm going to top up everybody's chum buckets of a nice and full. Yeah, and, um, good. Then is um, Erin about? Is she the marine biologist? She is, yeah. She's she's always close at hand, of course. Okay, just going to say, it. hey, Doc, um, these sharks that are going missing, are they any of the ones that we've tagged previously? She's, yeah, we, we have lost a couple, unfortunately. So any of the tags gone dark that, that we'd previously tagged, are they um, any particular area? Well, um, she'd say only one of the tags has gone dark. Um, it wasn't too far from here, maybe another a mile or two out, in fact. Um, but no, the, we uh, we got a tag back um, from, from she names a, a shark. We got a tag back from Fiona last week. And uh, we, we just found the tag uh, basically floating out to sea and um, a, a chunk of her fin. But we don't know, like, if, you know, something uh, was eating at the, the corpse or not entirely sure. We're yeah, hoping to see. Um, anyway, uh, what, what sharks do come, what do you get back in today and see if we can find out any more information on that, of course. But you really think it was orcas? No, no. I think if anything, it, the it may be another shark. Great whites, as they get older, they get bigger and bigger. They keep growing. It's possible there's a particularly old one that we haven't come across yet, that may be preying on the others, on the smaller ones. Ooh, ooh, doctor. Um, will the uh, will a uh, great white scavenge a corpse? Could it have simply been ripped apart, uh, died, and then? torn apart by another great white or other scavenger? That's exactly what I suspect. There are, are a lot of um, animals at sea that will prey on recently uh, killed marine creatures, including sharks. So, such a, It's so horrendous. Why does or this orcas. happen to such nice creatures? I, it's, it's nature, kid. When, when something takes one bite, everything in the ocean wants a bite of it. Exactly. That's uh, that's what we've signed up to study. Very true. And make no mistake, as beautiful creatures as they are, uh, great white is a very dangerous animal as well. You need to treat it with respect and caution. Just like most creatures, to be honest. So after you um, get done doling out the uh, chum, and put out all the bait crates. You wait about an hour or two, um, patrolling seagulls noisily um, surround your boat and start coming in and feeding on bits of chum um, that uh, that float up to the top. Uh, I would like all four of you to make spot hidden checks, although Luther can do so with a penalty die. Okay. Uh. 22 out of 55. Okay. Nice. Just succeeded with a 70. Yeah. Uh, bugger. Nothing. Nope. Luther is too focused on, on his fishing. I uh, missed it. Too busy ch chucking chum. In fact, Luther, you just pulled in a, 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 a decent-sized fish recently yourself, uh, and you're rebaiting re your hook. Brilliant. That's why we're here. <laughs> ah. <Look at> <laughs> and uh, so everyone else passed is that right no yeah. no I, I missed oh doug missed okay well doug might be yeah you know busy uh uh checking something checking something with the boat yeah i got, um, I got a hard pass if that helps 
Yeah, that's fine. So Gia and Steven both um, notice, excuse me, something large and dark breaks the surface of the water about maybe 40 yards away, nudging oh, Gia, one of the bait crates. Oh, I, I kind of grab onto Steven as I kind of get a bit startled and grab hold of him. A massive <laughs> dorsal fin penetrates the chum slick before dis dis disappearing again before the beneath the waves. God damn, I can't speak. Doctor, doctor, <laughs> we oh, have God. something over here. Yes, we've got a shark. <sighs> Doug, bring us bring us over this way. It's about forty yards there. Okay. I'll bring it around. About time. I'd like to reach up with my thumb and. Brush a non-existent piece of chum off of Gia's cheek. <laughs> Isn't this exciting? Oh, excuse me. Oh, perfect. Uh, I'm sorry, Stephen. No, I didn't mean to jump into you. Oh, it's all right. God. All right. Wow, exciting. Let's see what happens. So <laughs> as uh, as Doug brings the wave dancer closer to the uh, the shark, the boat judders with a large thump, rearing up several feet and then plunging back down. I would like you all to make dexterity rolls. Good. Uh oh, the captain failed, and um, how embarrassing! Cool. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Uh, zero one. Wow, the doctor uh, has failed as well. At zero zero zero. <laughs> Holy crap! Du double zero. Gia gets tossed overboard. Oh no! Ninety five. Oh. I got um a zero one. Is there any chance I could try and grab Gia? You got a zero one, and she got a zero zero. Yes, I'll say you grab her. As, oh, as oh. like, she's hanging over the side of the boat or her hand goes into the water, you pull her back up. Well, I'd like to yell, Gia, save me, as I roll a 95. <laughs> yeah, Steven goes hard uh, and slides back up against the uh, the fish, uh, the, the, like, the extra cooler, I guess, that, uh, that Luther's brought along to put his fish into and splashes fishy water on himself. Do I take damage? Um, uh -huh. Oh, uh, do you take Damage. Give me a luck roll. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Doug. Okay. Doug, thank you. Yet, <laughs> Luther, you succeeded, right? You're welcome, Kev. No, I failed. That's what I failed. Oh, you failed? Okay, give me a luck roll for you as well. Luck roll. 32, almost a hard pass. Okay, you don't take any damage. Oh. You just spill some fishy water on you. And Luther, oh, your suck. stool goes out from under you. Oh, oh. no. Crap. <sighs> failed. Your little folding stool, and you failed the luck roll as well, and you actually um, take one point of damage as you uh, bash your head off of the cooler. Oh, God. I nearly, God damn it. I nearly went overboard. <clears throat> All right, who's the Sunday driver on this boat? Who's Who's been... Where is the captain? I, I the captain to... and the doctor are both picking themselves up off the deck of the boat. What the um, hell is going on here? My boat is insured. My boat isn't insured yet. I mean, <clears throat> it is insured. Hey, hey you, paid for, you paid for an experience. That's what you're getting. Captain, it's my boat. You guys are paying. Don't wreck my boat, for Christ's sake. What's going on? Captain Mascari says, "Yeah, yeah, help me, Doug. Let's just, just let's check and make sure there's nothing wrong with the with the boat." Um, what the blazes was that? He, uh, uh, oh, sorry, Doctor Howie says, "What the blazes was that?" Um, Mascari says, there shouldn't be any rocks or reefs in this area. And uh, so quickly, Doug and, and the captain inspect the boat. The boat seems fine. Not not taking on any water. Doesn't seem to be damaged in any way. It's just an unsuspecting um, swell, it would have seemed to them. Right. So I'll double check the charts, just to make sure there's nothing we've missed. Double check the which? Oh, the, the charts? Chart. Yep, yep. You're checking the chart, checking your... Um, your navigation, um, everything lines up. You should be right where you think you are. There shouldn't be any okay. reefs or anything in this area. Captain, were we taking any sonar readings during this? Um, would that be standard procedure? Probably. Have we, got, have we got something like a fish finder on board as well? Anything like that? Or... Um. No, no, actually, we weren't. So, because okay. we're not on a fishing charter. Um, no, I mean, uh, this isn't a fishing boat. Uh, mm. We're just out here uh, trying to trying to bait in some great whites. Speaking of which, where's that shark? And um, if anybody is looking towards the shark you were approaching, you'll see something doesn't look quite right about it. It's bobbing oddly in the swells and bumping its nose into the bait crate. 
Oh, Give me some hidden rolls. Uh, by the way, Gia, Gia is kind of shaking after nearly going overboard. Like she is <laughs> in shark water. Right now. Pull her back towards me, towards the center of safety. Failed. Oh, I failed horribly. <laughs> I've failed. Wow. Anybody pass? Uh, yes, I got a. Hang on one second. Okay, Steve. So you'll discern the uh... hard pass. You'll see the yeah. yellow identifier tag affixed at the base of the shark's dorsal fin. I will point. Look at that. It's been tagged. Dr. Hersey, yes, it's one of ours. And the shark rolls in the water, exposing a massive bite wound in its abdomen. Most of its midsection torn away. It is very dead. Luckily, I'm not looking because I'm embracing Stephen. Right now. <laughs> right. Wiggling around Gia, I would like to pull out my phone and record some of this if possible. Sure. Sure you can. I'll try to hook it so that it stays alongside us. It doesn't drift off. Oh, Gia. Give me a luck roll. Oh. oh. <laughs> Did you fail? Yeah. Yeah, you see him pull out his phone and you just instinctively reach up and your phone is not in your pocket. Mm. Oh. You think it went overboard. Oh, no. Oh, my phone. Oh, God. Oh. Dr. Howie is quickly passing out the uh, the gaffs and saying, come on, we need to pull it in. Okay, I'll help Dr. Howie. I'll help too. Finally caught right. something today. All I right. reluctantly help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm backing up and filming time. this while it's occurring. This would be the biggest fish you've caught all day. <laughs> Absolutely. We need to pull the identifier tag, take some bio biological samples, examine the wounds, and see if we can identify what killed this shark. Cool. How big is it? Can I can I hold it with my two hands and, and have someone take a photo? <laughs> uh, it's a great white shark, so no. Ah, crap. <laughs> How much does a great white shark weigh on average, I wonder? Ah, uh, you look you're looking towards a teller, I reckon. It's, but it must be big. Great white shark weight i guess it's that on average they weigh 680 to 1100 kilos wow <laughs> wow so what's that um like 14 1500 pounds nearly a ton yeah yeah so we're, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna put it on the boat right we're just gonna no 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 just haul it up next to the boat oh, okay. so i can pull the tag excellent she looks at you like you're crazy <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna, huh? Given so, what we have studied and what we know about sharks, mm -hmm. um, how much bigger is that bite than what we would think, uh, you know, compared to, say, a great white? Well, while Dr. Howie um, examines the identifier tag and runs it through her uh, laptop to see what information she can pull up on the shark, you can examine the wound and see what you can tell. I would love to examine that wound and film I will, it. I will also examine the wound as and, I will have reluctantly. And Gia, it. you can take biological samples. Yes. Okay. Dr. Howie says. <laughs> uh, oh, exciting. Yay. But if Be you careful. totally if you totally want to look over and pay attention more attention to what she's doing, you can totally do that. So yeah. um so as you pull in the shark, she gets the tag and she goes right over to her laptop, which is probably in the cabin part of the boat. I'm sure for safety um, near where uh, Doug usually is um, near the, you know, the, the wheel and all and the controls. Um, give me a roll. Let's see here. It would be um, biology or zoology. They recommend. So I would say your marine biology uh, would make okay. sense for the two oh, marine oh. biologists. I got an O3. <laughs> hmm. 38. It is just a pass. Okay. So, um, what you can tell right away, Gia, is that this is a fresh kill. This shark doesn't look like it's been dead for very long. In fact, oh, no. you would say less than 15 minutes. What the? Steven, you measure the bite radius. It is 49 inches. And doing the math in your head that you've learned in school, Based on this measurement, the animal that killed this shark is probably 48 to 52 feet long. Jeez. Larger than the boat. And, uh, I communicate this to those around Bigger than me. even the biggest orca you could think of. Um, Stephen, oh, definitely filming this. <laughs> Stephen, it, it seems like 
this shark has been dead for only about 15 minutes. Oh my lord. Snap up. I tell tell the captain, you know, hey, hey, come here. And we're just kind of a little bit in shock. Should we take a sanity roll for this? Um definitely once you measure the bite, you should. Yeah, okay. I'll... I'll, I'll take one as well. Kids already. You can all you, anybody who's paying attention at this point can, yeah, because you realize oh. the size of the bite. This thing is, like I said, it's something bigger hey. than your boat. Okay, I I, I failed. <laughs> you lose a sanity. Point. Ah. Uh. Rolled an O one. You don't lose a sanity point. It's okay, Gia. Hmm. You keep it all right. Okay. And um, Doctor Howie will call it. It's Albert. We tagged him two years ago off the coast of Wellfleet. He was an 18-footer. But it's a big. Doc, he's a big shark. But Doc, it's. It seems like it's a fresh kill. Like only like 15 minutes. She comes over. Oh, you're you're right, Gia. This is very fresh. Yeah, look, look at the, the size, size of, of this bite. Uh, she passes her sanity is, roll. This. What is? What's going on? Is is it just a bite, or is it, has it been kind of eaten? Is it more like an attack, or? Um, no. In this case, this is just a bite. I, I hug Stephen again. <laughs> <laughs> I hang on tightly, and then I say, "Gia, hang on one second. I would like to probe the wound with my hands, looking in case a tooth or something may have broken off." Just kind of probe around the edges of the wound, looking for okay. anything that might be a tooth, talon. No problem. Uh, you you don't find anything. All right. Uh, you notice also Dr. Howie has um, kind of a bewildered look on her face. Like she's almost not believing what she's seeing. Hey, Doc, you still with us? Yeah, it's just... <sighs> This this wound it's it's massive. This is a very large predator indeed. Oh, do you know what we do? You know exactly what we're dealing with, Doc? Just by that bite, or it can't be a shark, surely. Have you ever heard of a megalodon? Yeah, for... seen the movie. <laughs> but they don't. Oh, I'm glad. Oh. You ever seen Jaws? Yes, I have, Doc. Same same way, same I mean, this, this bite size, this, this thing's like 50 feet long. Jeez. Oh. Jaws was a guppy compared to whatever bit this thing. Yeah. You're saying we're going to need a bigger boat, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> she kind of <laughs> chuckles and says, well, whatever it is, I don't see any sign of it now. Uh, it must have been scared off by the engines as we approached. Well, you um, know the Everybody roll listen rolls, please. I'm glad I didn't fall in the waters. <sighs> uh, I passed. Passed. Failed. Oh, I had passed. Just, just a normal pass. Failed. Okay, so pass <laughs> was Steven. Or no, Gia. And yep. who else? Steven? I got nope. pass. How pass? Doug. Gia and yep. Doug. Okay. So, Gia and Doug, you hear an eerie, unearthly keening call. Sounds like it's coming from somewhere underwater. Give me sanity rolls. Oh, I, 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 I hold Stephen even tighter now. And oh my god, what was going? On? Oh. I get really good rolls, and then I just get a bad roll. If you failed, you lose one sand. If you pass, yeah. you don't. I lost the point of sanity. Okay. Well, Gia, okay. It's okay, we will be fine. And if anybody right. has zoology, biology, marine biology, you can roll that. Uh, who hears the sound that is? I guess so. I guess between Gia and Doug. Fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, zero. What? Oh, I need to change Fast? my dice. No, that's a zero, zero, zero. I need to change my dice. Another zero, zero. Wow. Yep. I need to change my dice. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea what's making that sound. I'm too scared. I'm too. I'm holding on to Steven. You're thinking of monsters, you're thinking of megalodon, you're thinking of mermaids, who knows what the fuck you're thinking Jeez. of. Mermaids don't take bites out of sharks, but... 
Doug, did you you do you have zoology, biology, marine biology, anything? I don't think it did. Just I don't check. think so either. No, I actually just made your character, didn't I? No, yeah, he does. No, nothing like that. You have no idea what it is either. Just know that it sounds like it's coming from underwater, and <laughs> everyone will notice that the seagulls stop crying and peel away, heading for land. Whoa. Well, that's odd. Uh, that's odd. That's very odd. Oh, Stephen. You know, that crazy guy at the dock was saying there was something out there that's not quite natural. You guys want to head back? Spot. Um, no, you don't have to get spot hidden rolls. You'll notice that the doctor has gone silent. She's staring out to sea. Her eyes are bulging and she's flushed and sweating and gasping. Uh-huh. Give me psychology rolls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I passed. She seems transfixed by something. Anybody who heard the sound and notices this also will think that she seems to be transfixed by that call. Okay. She's actually looking out, but she's also looking down. So she's looking into the sea. All right, shake her. Hey, doc. doctor. Doc? Give me a spot hidden roll. I, I've unglued myself from Stephen now. I am kind of just looking at the dog. Yeah. <laughs> you succeed? I... Yeah, I just succeeded. You'll notice some kind of subcutaneous scars, like dark, almost pulsing horizontal lines now visible running along the side oh, of her weird. neck. Oh. Oh. And she looks I... at you when you call to her. Uh, who was it, Shooker? Was it Doug? Yeah. Yeah, she looks at you and she looks confused. And then like, she shakes you off of her, looking kind of agitated. She says, Unhand me, please. As soon as I saw those uh, marks, I hugged Stephen again. What huh. was what was that? It's okay, Gia. Sorry, Doc, you didn't seem with us for a moment. Are you oh, okay? God. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all just so strange. <laughs> the sound is no longer happening anymore, so. Have you heard anything like that before? That definitely wasn't a whale. You heard it too. I, I yeah. heard it as well. What you guys heard? A, I heard a noise. What? What? No, that was that was no whale call. Yeah, very weird noise. I thought I thought I was imagining it. And again, she st- stares out to see. And then the there? radio crackles to life. Oh, uh, an oh. SOS signal. What? The captain grabs it, picks it up. This is the wave dancer. Go ahead. And the uh, distress call comes out. This is uh, uh, this is Bill Vogel, uh, captain captain of the Coyote. Our uh, our onboard motor is out. We need a uh, we need pickup. Outboard motor, sorry. Outboard motor. It's totally quit. Uh, I'm out here with my grandson. We're, uh, and he gives some coordinates. And uh, Captain looks at the uh, the map. And I assume Doug has kind of gone into the cabin as well. Yeah. He'll point to you on the map. He says it's only two miles away. <clears throat> We're the closest ship, closest vessel. Captain, let's pick him up and head home. This is this is weird. <sighs> well, I agree. Uh, we, at least we got to go pick him up. Yeah. Oh, we don't have to go home. Dr. We'll Howie, you got to let that carcass go. Uh, I can't and deal with what's going on. I can't deal with this. Dr. Howie sets to giving uh, instructions to Luther, Gia, and Stephen on how to un, you know, hook the, the, the sharks so that it will detach from the side of the boat. Because I imagine they have it like kind of hooked in in some way, like mm-hmm. like so that it doesn't float <laughs> away while they're taking samples, etc. But yes, yeah, so giving you instructions on how to set it loose. Um... Once that's done, then uh, Captain Mascari once again reconfirms the coordinates. Says, all right, uh, Doug, point us in the direction. Let's get that way. Okay. Give a bottle of water to Gia and take one for myself. It will be okay, babe. It'll be all right. Oh, thank you. I just like neck it. Captain. Part of the adventure. Captain walks out to Luther and says, are you one of those beers now? I think I need one after that.
Stephen, I did not sign up for this. What the hell? Dr. Howie looks at you, looks at Stephen and says, can you get her under control? It's just a dead shark. He's fine. No, it's, it's not the dead shark. It's the weird noises and the... Look, strange oh. things happen out at sea. It's just the way it's always been for centuries. If you want to be a real marine biologist, you're going to have to get yourself together. Okay, no, I can, I can, I can do that. I can do it. Don't forget, you want one of those don't forget I, I, I will be uh, reporting to your professors regarding this expedition. Uh-huh. I can do this. I can... Just kind of give the doctor a look. Everything will be fine here, doctor. We'll follow orders. Okay. Doug gets you underway. Two-mile trip to uh, to the Coyote to pick up uh, two stranded uh, two stranded passengers. Well, pilot and passenger. Um, everybody, give me luck rolls. Oh yeah, uh, pass. zero four. Up. Oh no, it's up. Zero four. So one of them. That's a pass for Lee for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I got Even for fails. Steve fails. Gia passed. Yep. Luther, did you pass? Failed. No, failed again. Okay, so just uh, Gia and Doug. You both kind of look back at the, uh, the the huge shark carcass which you've left floating behind you. And it suddenly vanishes beneath the waves. Oh, no way. Right, okay. Give me sanity rolls. Uh, <laughs> right, as soon as I see that, I um, jump. I literally jump yeah. into Steven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 16. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what? 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 Ninety-three. Well, Gia, you lose another point of sanity. Oh, Doug, you rolled a sixteen. You. I think you passed. You don't lose any. Yeah, I tried not to freak out, but I accelerate the boat. Yeah, I'm like in. I'm trying to get into your arms, Steve, and I've jumped in. <laughs> Starting to get a little wary of Gia because my mom <laughs> back in Cleveland wore me a crazy chick. But <laughs> I accept it and hug her. It'll be okay, Ben. It'll be okay. Pat her on the back. I'm going to try and get in touch with Bill on his boat just to make sure he's okay. Okay. Uh, Luther um, uh, objected a little bit to uh, to departing, apparently, because he was taking selfies with the dead shark. But huh. eventually, of course, the doctor s snapped him into it and to uh, get him to help unhook the shark. But yeah, um, so you got two miles uh, before your two boats will rendezvous. Um, after two miles, you will uh, pick up visual of the boat. It's a uh, it's one of those small um, small fishing boats, like I uh, described earlier. You know, like yeah, I mean, it's not super small. It's maybe like a twenty four footer, smaller than your your research vessel. Um, you'll hear the shouts as you approach um, of uh, of the pilot waving his arms, and uh, as you pull up. The, uh, the wave dancer pulls up to the coyote, it's called. You'll notice something extraordinary has happened. Tied to the side of the coyote is an elongated, scaly, serpentine creature, perhaps 30 feet long. Oh, man. It's huge, but not quite huge enough to have done the damage that you observed on Albert the shark. Um, near its gill slits sprout two tiny forelegs. Legs, not fins. And its head features a huge mouth brimming with teeth nearly the size of a man's hand. Most astonishing, the creature has a single cyclopean eye set in the middle of its head, the center of its head. Uh, a large tuna fishing hook pokes from its maw, and its body is riddled with gunshots. All right. <clears throat> I congratulate the, the two fishermen. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the catch of the day. Yeah, Bill Vogel. He's a uh, he, he's kind of um, let's see. His grandson is Peter is seven, so we'll say Bill Vogel. He's in his fifties, um, late fifties. He says, "Damnedest thing I ever caught. That's for sure." What the it's hell? Quite the prize, isn't it? Brilliant. Hey, uh, how much are you asking for it? Well, first of all, anybody who has seen this thing uh, will also notice that it is still alive. Um, it's bleeding out, but it's still thrashing sluggishly and mewing piteously. 
the call, the same as that you heard coming from under the water earlier, for those of you who heard it. When uh, we spotted this thing, I flipped that phone up and start filming again. Okay. All what of you make heck? sanity rolls. Oh, what is oh. going on? What the little hell? little Peter, Insane. his grandson says, "Look, my grandpa caught a real live sea monster." <laughs> oh, I failed again. He had to shoot it a <laughs> bunch of times too before we could re- bring it in. Cool, oh. cool. That's really cool, kid. Uh, G is not having a good. G time failed right again. There. Yep. You lose two points of sanity. Uh, so Anybody else so... fail? No. 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 Okay. Nope. <laughs> I, I I'm like I'm like crying into Stephen uh-huh. after saying that. Peter, did you say no or yes? I succeeded, so you I succeeded. Didn't... Okay, cool. So no sanity loss for those who passed. Um it, yeah, it looks like a sea monster, all right, but it's it's dying. It's not really it doesn't look dangerous. Um Bill says, Yeah, it's the damnedest thing. He said, uh after I hooked it, it started attacking our boat. Like it was <laughs> Like it was intelligent or something. I think that's why the motor won't work. I emptied I emptied my thirty out six into it, and uh, and and it pretty much gave up the ghost at that point. I mean, looks like it's still breathing, but yeah, we were able to tie it up here on the side of the boat. And um, give me Let's psychology rolls on Bill as he's telling you this tale. Yeah. Um, I, I just passed. Hang on. Some... It looks yeah, like one of them fish that them deep deep fishing Russian guys put up on YouTube. Oh my god. Uh-huh. Uh, is it Doc, Doc, Stephen, what, what the hell? He gets in it? front of Steve's camera phone and says, that's right, Damn. and I, Bill Vogel of Salem, Massachusetts, I caught it. <laughs> hey, Bill, Game was on. it? did you say it wasn't attacking you before you started shooting it? Or before you hooked it? Well, no, after I hooked it. Once I hooked it, it attacked the boat. Just came at us, kept ramming us. Oh, maybe it's because you hooked it. <laughs> maybe, yeah, but no maybe fish. Just... It's a fish. Let's get it on board. A- any Not fish you boat. hook, they try to swim away. They don't. They don't come at the boat and attack a boat. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe you delayed. Look at it. It's no fish anyway. It looks more like a dragon. Maybe you delayed hey. it from doing something. You should have just let it go. What? Oh. Hey, well, it's not I, going anywhere now. Can I remind everybody we're conservationists? <laughs> this thing's still alive. Should we let, let it go? No, we don't let it go. Get it on the no. board. You can study it. Hey, Doc. Maybe I, a valuable scientific specimen. We are Doc, a research Dr. Specimen. Howie oh, has no. run to the back of the boat and is making a spectacle of herself, gesticulating over the gunwale in an attitude... Um, almost like like prayer and supplication and she's gasping some kind of wordless atonal chant out over the waters what what's going on with the dog and uh did anybody pass a psychology roll on bill yeah. no yeah i yes. did i did yes i did okay he's definitely telling the truth he's not lying um but yeah. he does look to be in a bit of shock awesome. yeah. <laughs> meanwhile as a scientist is freaking out and like uh praying or something and chanting in some weird sounds um, her neck scars oh, are even God. more visible and like almost throbbing like wow. they're definitely throbbing in fact um, her skin looks grayish and sickly and her eyes are bulging even more and look almost saucer like as she's freaking out back there wow. um, we got a medic on board has anybody anybody got any medicine yeah, I do. <laughs> Roll. No. Yeah, I actually passed. Just. You've never seen anything uh-huh. like this before. Give me a second uh-huh. roll. You're the best, uh-huh. Gio. Oh, I've come for you. Oh, I failed. You lose another point of sanity. Oh, my God. Have I you hit your near... 20% yet? I'm <laughs> near. I am actually near. Like... <laughs> you're going you're gonna to end up with a phobia of the sea at this rate. <laughs> uh-huh. You might want to switch... Uh classes when you get back <laughs> so, uh, Steve, bill says what the hell is wrong with her anyway Steve, well, let's get her a drink come on Steve, Do they get the fish on board come on it, we, no we should take samples of it Stephen. Well, hold on let me gather a few things from the cabin he's going back into the well there's not much of a cabin on a 24 foot boat but you know what uh, i mean um, Stephen, we need samples hang on 
Hold on, Gia. I'd like to go up to Dr. Howie up close to her Mm -hmm. and just, you know, talk very loudly in her ear. Dr. Howie, Dr. Howie, can you hear me? This isn't right. And she just ignores you and keeps on doing her. Uh, uh, Gia's going to take prayer and supplication. Uh, Shake her shoulder. Dr. Shake her shoulder and she takes a swing to push you off of her. Um, I'm going to say it catches you probably by surprise. Yeah. Pushes you back. You fall on your ass and take two points of damage. Wow. Ow. Uh Stephen. (laughs) I run to Stephen and help him back up. And she continues with her prayer. You can offer a drink now, Luther? Uh What is going on? And Uh, After I've helped uh, Stephen up, I will go to the creature and um, take some samples. Well, it's over on the other boat, so... Have we got any smelling salts? You're you're pulling up alongside it and roping up, yeah, probably. Who who has smelling salts? Sorry, have we got any smelling salts in the first aid kit? Anything like that? There are on the boat. Um, mm, Would they keep smelling salts on a boat, Norman? Is that a normal thing? I don't know. I think they would in a medical kit. Yeah, maybe. Sure. Can I can I try those on Erin? Okay. Yeah, you can. You do that. Like, be careful. She's violent. She takes a swing at you. Whoa. Okay, I'll try. Uh, try do you want to dodge? Roll yeah. It. She got a hard success. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> she got hard success. I got um, zero zero. But zero oh. Zero, zero. You take That's three points good. of damage, oh, and she straight up like like um, backhands you. Oh, you man. drop the smelling salts overboard. And are knocked back away from her. Ouch. She's having none of it. Uh, what is going on? The captain with, says, uh... maybe we better just leave her alone. No, this isn't right. She's, she's, she may be a danger to herself. Should we tie her up? Uh, I think so. I think we can't leave her doing what she's doing. And as you're I... saying that, uh, let me get to the right spot here. You hear, you all hear, no rules this time. Another one of these alien cries, this one much more powerful than the previous, erupt from underwater and even up into the air. The water ripples. Wow. Um, And it sounds almost like an answer to Dr. Howie's strange calls. (laughs) Everybody give me sanity rolls. Yeah. Oh, crap. (sighs) I failed. What is is with me in sanity rolls today? (laughs) Jesus. So you would have noticed that there were sharks. You can see the dark shapes of sharks circling where the uh, dead sea serpent-like thing, you know, or it's dying sea serpent thing that's dripping blood into the water. Mm-hmm. Of course, that attracted sharks that were circling around. You would notice that the circling sharks all swim rapidly away at that cry. And if you failed that sanity roll, you lose two points of sanity, Gia. Oh, crap. Uh, did anybody else fail that sanity roll? Yes, yeah. indeed. I'm, I'm two yep, points You also away. lost two points, Luther. I'm, yep. I'm two away from 20%. Wow. Did anybody, everybody else passed? I passed. I passed. Stephen passed. Okay. Um, marine biologists, marine biology rolls, or natural history rolls, or biology rolls, anything like that? Okay. I, yeah. Uh, O2. Well, marine biology or natural history, anyway. Yeah, okay, that well, is um, very odd behavior for sharks. Like nothing drives sharks away from bloodied water. Well, Stephen, this isn't right. What is? What is? And from below, something smashes, crazy. smashes into the coyote and rams it into the side of the wave dancer. Everybody, make dex rolls. Yeah, yeah. I passed. I passed this one. Oh. Oh. Extreme pass. 30. I wish. Did everybody pass? Yeah, yeah I, I got a hard. Yep. Good. Um, so, you guys actually maintain your, your footing this time for the most part. Um, the the captain uh, actually goes down to one knee. Uh, the, the doctor is fine because she's kneeling at the back of the boat. Um, the grandfather and grandson both get knocked down on the coyote. Um, but they begin to recover themselves and say, screw this. And they start scrambling onto your boat as the coyote is going kind of, um, what's that called? It's keeling. Uh, is that what it's called? What do you call it when it 
boat starts to tilt. Uh, listing? No. Listing. Yeah, listing. listing okay, yeah, it's listing. Uh, this is uh, the grandfather says, "Screw this!" and he practically tosses his grandson onto your boat, and then he oh, leaps over grab himself. The kid. I hope and old... <clears throat> the coyote, with sea serpent and all, gets dragged beneath the waves. Your boat, the wave dancer, pitches and spins in the sudden displacement of water. Um, everybody makes spot hidden rolls. I need a hard success. Let me know if you get one. I got a 10. <laughs> nope. You unlucky Zero, three. Okay. It's making up for Steven? all bad rolls. Terrible failure. Yeah. Okay. But Gia oh. and Doug passed. Yeah. Got zero, hard three. successes. Oh. Uh-huh. Cool. Um, you notice, the two of you notice an impossibly large set of jaws disappearing into the dark depths, dragging down the coyote between them. Oh, um, and I need sanity rolls from you too. Jeez. Well, I've got, I need to pass. <laughs> Is this noise still No, no. Uh, Doug, I'll you fail. lose two sanity. Gia, oh, no. you lose four. Oh, yeah, I, I've gone, I'm 20% already. <laughs> uh, do you have any particular bout of madness that uh, you think is appropriate? I, I think she'd, she'd probably be in hysterics, to be honest. Okay, she goes into hysterics. And that will last for the next two rounds. She's going to be hysterical for about 12 seconds. Um, as the boat, uh, Doug, you're trying to bring the boat back under control so that you don't capsize. Um, imagine like a, a boat that's getting just dragged underwater. It would create almost like a little cyclone, you know? Yeah. Um, another monstrous call breaks the surface. This one unmistakably filled with rage. Captain Mascari rushes into the cabin to help Doug with the wheel as you struggle to uh, to bring the wave dancer about and point it landward. Dr. Howie, in the full throes of her ululations, screeches to the waves from the deck. As a gargantuan sea serpent, a larger, older version of the infant specimen you saw attached to the coyote, surfaces a few dozen yards in front of the wave dancer, cutting you off from shore. It glares at all of you aboard with a single eye the size of a ship's wheel, seething with the furious with furious intelligence. Everybody makes sand rolls. <laughs> oh bugger. No. Oh, oh I, pa- I actually passed a sanity roll. <laughs> you passed? Yeah, I actually passed. Oh man. Okay, since you passed, you only lose three more sanity. Oh yeah. Oh, that's fine. I think you faint this time. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I'll faint. You'll I faint come. into Steven. You'll come to in nine rounds. Anybody else fail that sanity roll? Yeah, I did. You can yeah. see now on my screen. That's what you see. Well, it's not. It's not wrapping up your boat at the moment, but you know. <laughs> oh lord. But that's what your boat kind of looks like too. Um. So, Doug, you said you passed. No, no, I failed. You failed, so you lose. Oh. Um, I don't think I have that die, do I? No, I don't have that die. Interesting. Somebody said Call of Cthulhu never uses D12s. Yeah, it it did. It's not meant to. Well. (laughs) I don't know why not. It's one of my favorite dice. You lose eight sanity points, Doug. Jeez, man. Give me an idea roll. Okay. Yes. So yes. Uh, do you, do you yeah. have a preferred bout of madness, or do you want me to roll in the random chart? Um, <laughs> let's have a think. It's probably um. I, th- I think Doug's somebody who just kind of stares off into the distance and loses it. Okay, so he goes kind of um, catatonic. I think so. For the I next four Steve, rounds. I hope, I hope Stephen caught me when I passed it. <laughs> I don't know, I Stephen. Did you pass your sanity roll? Yes, I passed it by almost 30. Okay, so Stephen, you lose two points of sanity. And Luther, how did you do on yours? Uh, completely failed. Completely failed? So Luther, yep. you lose seven points of sanity. and Give me an idea roll. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. <laughs> what the... Uh, success, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do you want to pick, or do you want me to roll random for your bout of madness? Uh, roll random, please. Uh, 
Red mist descends and you explode in a spree of oh, uncontrolled no. violence and destruction directed at your surroundings. Ah. Allies or foes alike. That's fucking right. For okay. two rounds. <laughs> so for two rounds, you're going to go into a red mist. Okay. Of violence. Okay. And I think that covers all of that. Uh huh. Uh, let's take a quick bio break. Okay. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, this is insane. <laughs> I, grab, I use a little boys' room and grab a fresh cold beer. This is insane. <laughs> uh, I've never had that much bad luck with sanity before. No, that's crazy. I've watched most of the stuff you played in. These are just terrible sanity rolls. It's crazy. I know. I know. <laughs> this is the first time I failed one the whole night. <laughs> no, I did on this. I I made this one by thirty. I don't think I failed one all night. I, t I tend to. I tend to have. I think the luckiest I've ever been is when I actually played lucky in Misty. That is the luckiest. I've that was been. great. Oh, I better use the little boys' room. Yeah, I better go as well. All right, well, I know how I spell relief. Oof. Yeah. So, Ian, I, I thought it was this was the second movie in the uh, 70s exploitation cycle, but it's it's, um, it's a published scenario? Yes, it is. Okay. It's cool. from uh, Fear Sharp Little Needles. Yeah, I'm. I'm so glad that I had because I because I have fear of sharp little needles, and I nearly read this one, but I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> There's quite a few in that I haven't read. There's only a couple that I've actually read in. That. I wonder how I haven't many read of any I of them read. yet. I'll tell you in a second here. Let me pull it up. Fear sharp little needles. Tell me if I run. Looking at the table of contents. I have run one, 
Luckily, this I is the tenth. This is the tenth one I've run. That's what have I read? Um... Yep, I've. This is the tenth uh, scenario from Fears Sharp Little Needles that I've run. I've read. Do you have a physical copy, or are you using a PDF? No, I have a PDF. I bought. Yeah. I have both. <laughs> 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 but I've only actually read five of them. I've only played two of them. Let's see. I've got a well, PDF of almost everything. I I haven't read much of the newer stuff. Mainly, it's the old classics. Yeah, I think it's a good rule of thumb to not read anything unless you've played it, or are going to run it soon. You know, or mm -hmm. you know, just in case you get a chance to play. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely what I do with Into the Darkness because I never know what's gonna pop up. Yeah, this is a real. Kind of a small, short, little uh, situational horror. I like to think of it. It's not mm. so much investigational at all. It's it's much more just like puts the characters in a situation, a horrifying situation, and see if they survive. Kind of a survival horror at the same time, I guess. Yeah. I love it. This is a horror movie, and I love playing in it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of really. There's, from the five that I've read, there's a they're pretty good. The five that I've read. Isn't it? I've enjoyed all of the uh, scenarios I've run from that book. It's a fantastic little collection. 25 one-shot scenarios and one yep. full-size scenario, which could probably easily run three sessions or more. Now, I will admit, especially when I listen to End of the Darkness, um, if I've listened to their playcast and I'm curious, I'll go take a look and see what has been changed. Sure. I always find that interesting. Yeah, I me love too. when you keep I, I would count that like watching or listening to an actual play is the same as actually playing or re, you know it, it is at oh, that yeah, point yeah. you kind of already know the spoilers so honest to be honest if you watch my truth or consequences that actually based off a one page scenario that i turned into cool. like four sessions so i remember that that was absolutely amazing <laughs> <laughs> is everybody like back jailhouse. yeah he's um, back peter yep absolutely Cool. We'll go back to. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's a wicked looking sea monster, isn't it? it is. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. All right. So now Red Mist has descended upon Luther. Luther, the nearest character to you is the Doctor. Excellent. Oh, no. Uh, so. Are we Doctor, right? Yes. Yes. The, she's the only real Doctor here. She's the only uh, All right. graduated uh, PhD. Okay. So uh, you can attack her. How do you do so? What do you What do you do so with? What do you do? Uh, I hit her in the head with uh, my fishing pole. Okay. I try, to, I try to I try to gouge her eyes out with the point of my fishing pole. Come on. Okay. Lord. She is going to fight back. She is going Shut to attempt up, to you grapple you. New age bitch. <laughs> <laughs> failed. Uh, let's see. You failed. Go. It's your oh. fault. Shut the fuck up. She succeeds and she grapples you. Oh, and with her, oh, yeah, I'll just say you got the, the surprise tax. So you got to go first. So with her action, she's going to try to hurl you overboard. Oh. You may resist with, um, yeah, I brawl. Did. It's brawl. I didn't mean it. Uh, what, what do you want me to roll? The dex app string? Brawl. Fighting brawl. Uh, fourth, uh, fuck. No, failed. Okay, she hurls you overboard. Oh, fuck. Uh, next round, you can come up with your life vest on, no problem. And uh, I think you were only in rage for two rounds, was it? Uh, yeah, it wasn't okay. very long. Okay. So, you guys see this happen. You see him stab at her with his fishing pole. She knocks it aside, wraps her arms around him like in a bear hug, and just twists and like hip tosses him over the side of the boat wow. into the water. Splash! <laughs> Man overboard. You're unconscious, of course. Yeah. Yes. Lord. Screaming Luther, no. And then wondering if everyone got paid in advance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what will you do? Gia's unconscious. What will you do, Doug? 
Um, I was catatonic, so I don't know if I've shaken myself. That's right, that you well. are catatonic. Uh, did we roll how long that was going to last? No, we didn't. Uh, four rounds, so you're still okay. catatonic. So next round, Stephen, you said no. Um, the captain quickly runs, grabs. Hmm, well, wait a minute. There's a big sea serpent there. He does still have the uh, presence of mind to grab a life uh, preserver and with a rope attached to it. Much like the ones that are circling your character portraits on my uh, screen now. Oh. Curls it over. Uh, in the out to where Luther is now surfacing from the water with his life vest on and gasping for air, spitting out water. And then the rage will descend off of you, Luther. And you suddenly realize that you're in the water beside your research vessel that you own. And there's a sea monster in the water, too. Uh, I tried to get up uh, back on the boat. As soon as okay. I can. Help, 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 help. Clop, 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 clop. Captain will try to help you aboard the boat. While that's going on, um, you would notice um, yeah, nobody's driving the boat now, so the boat's just sitting there. The sea monster is just kind of there, and you'll see bits of its body kind of surfacing on, on the water, and it seems to have almost like a circle around the boat. I mean, you can still try to drive away from it, but just to show that it's so big that its circumference kind of circles the boat. Um, oh. my, primarily, it's just the front portion of it, though, that's above water in front of the boat. And it is, um, well, actually, I need all of you who are conscious to make power rolls. Even those of you who are catatonic still make a power roll. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious. That's fine. <laughs> I suppose even your unconscious mind could still... Yeah, give me a power roll. Why not? Yeah. Everybody's roll power. Damn it. <laughs> even passed. Failed. Made it. Uh, I passed. Okay. Who failed? I failed. Luther failed. Makes sense. He's soaking I... wet and trying to get back into the boat with the help of the captain. The rest of you all passed, and you realize that an intelligence not your own is trying to sift through your thoughts. Um, it seems to be coming from the creature and it's probing your mind. Give me sanity rolls. Oh, man. Now, you're already in a fit of madness, so you don't, don't go into another one, but... The, uh, the, I, I failed. The loss still accumulates. You still lose another sanity point there, Gia. Uh, this isn't good. <laughs> Steven? 86, a huge failure. Finally. Wow. You lose two more points of sanity. And Doug? Yeah, just made it. Okay, you only lose one. Cards, okay, so it's going down. Um, now, you, um, even in your unconscious mind, for you it's probably a dream, Gia, but for, the, for yeah. Doug and Steven, you um, can wordlessly discern the blood price that the creature is demanding for the loss of its kin. The two directly responsible, Bill Vogel and his grandson, must be thrown alive into the sea. Ooh. Ooh. As you uh, make this realization, you'll come out of your catatonic state, Doug. Um, you'll be awake in a couple of rounds, Gia. You'll see a, you know, the captain pulling Luther back into the boat. Oi. Oi. And the boy and the grandson are looking at you with a knowing look on their face. Apparently, they heard it as well, although there was nothing to hear. It was in their mind. The boy begins to cry, and Bill pulls him close to him, uh, or actually pulls him behind him, and is looking at the three of you, Stephen, or two of you, Stephen and Doug. Say, no, 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 no. I won't let you harm my grandson. Wow. I'm shocked. What's the um, what's happened with the dock? What's happened with Erin? She is still at the back of the boat. Um, she's looking at the captain helping Luther into the boat to see if Luther was still a threat. And now she's moving towards the uh, the grandfather and grandson. Whoa, right, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of run down and just try and get get between them. Let's check initiative. Let's check dexterities, I guess. Okay. Um, what's your dexterity, Stephen? Eight. Oh, I'm sorry. That's movement. My bad. Yeah. Sixty. 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 Um, Gia, <clears throat> for future reference. 
Wait, w- w- sorry, I blanked out. Dexterity. <laughs> uh, 65 is my dex. Okay. Ooh, Dexter Uh, Luther? <laughs> Just let me check. <laughs> 55. 55, and Doug? I got 70. It's pretty Ooh, minimal. Ooh, wow. 70, okay. And she's there. Okay, cool. So you get to act first, Doug. You're going to move up between her and... Yeah, I'm going to try and get between between her and the um, the dad and the kid. Okay. Just kind of just to give them time to get below. Just to no, there's no to... below. <laughs> oh, is there no below? Is that all right? Okay. No. Just to, just to kind of be between them then. There's no proper below. I mean, there might be like a little cargo space or something to jam stuff into, but no, there's no below decks. Okay. All right. Um, so... Grandfather, seeing you go behind him first, he gets real nervous, but he realizes that you're getting between him and the strange-looking doctor. Her eyes are even more saucer-like now. Those pulsing scars in her neck seem to have opened up, but there's no blood coming out of them. Oh, weird. Like slits in the side of her neck. Um, the captain sees this and is now like pressing himself back up against the back of the boat beside Luther, um, kind of in fear. Who's oh, next on initiative? Uh, Gia. Gia, what are I, you doing? I, am I still unconscious? Oh yeah, uh, we'll say you're you're coming to now. Um, you remember the request in your brain. You might think it's a dream, but you quickly realize, no, oh, there's still a sea serpent there. It's still eyeing the boat, and th- you see I the think... tense Mexican standoff on the situation developing on the deck. I think because I just regain consciousness, I'd probably just stand there in shock still, like just staring at everyone. Mm-hmm. Luther, give me a power roll. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, uh, success. Yes. Success? Yes. Okay, you also now sense the thoughts of the creature. You mm-hmm. feel it rifling through your own thoughts. And uh, you hear the wordless request that the grandfather and grandson be tossed into the sea for it. Um, give me a sanity roll. Ah, oh, failed again. Jesus. All right, that'll cost you two points of sanity. <laughs> okay. It's disturbing. Yeah, the creature is basically demanding a blood sacrifice for the murder of its uh, of its kin, perhaps even its child. Um. It wants those responsible thrown into the sea. And uh, who's next on initiative? Um, okay, we went Gia. Steven. Um, do I hear this voice in my head? I... No, it's not so much. Uh, it's kind of like a wordless thought. Okay. Just an impression, right? Mm-hmm. Oh. I'm, I'm just trying to, okay, I'm, I'm trying to think back as hard as I can. To just don't take don't take the boy. It's just a boy. He didn't know any better. Don't take the boy. I'm just I want to concentrate as hard as I can and hang on to Gia. Okay, you're hanging on to Gia. Yeah, you're, I try, kind of, you're trying to like communicate to it to transmit as hard as I can. Hopefully, it will understand something. And you we are get an image it. in your mind of the the boat you're on being smashed into splinters and pulled under the water. And next is Luther. What would you like to do? I would like to grab hold of the steering wheel and just <clears throat> hit the boat equivalent okay. of. Uh, you run up and jump and in, run into the cabin and uh, hit the throttle full forward. Yeah. Absolutely. I assume you try to steer a little bit to the right or left to avoid the uh, the sea serpent directly in front of you. Yeah, preferably. I want to get some speed up first before I ram no it. No problem. I will let you uh, use your piloting to dodge its attack. Uh, okay. But yes. oh, I saw... Um, hold on, what's the sea serpent speed? It might not go next. Um, so you run up and do that. Um, no, it'll go after you. The doctor, actually, sorry, the doctor goes. Um, she rushes forward um, and attacks... Uh, who's this saying for? Doug. Okay. Doug, would you like to dodge or fight back? I would like to dodge. You're not surprised, so you can roll the dodge. Oh, yeah. I, I got to inform you I have an extreme success. 
Oh, right, I've got 11. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Where's my dodge? Okay, so yeah, I've got a hard, hard success. Would you like to spend luck? I think I probably should. How much yeah. luck do you need to spend to get an extreme? Hang on, so what was I? Ooh, I'm gonna spend um, ten. Okay. Yep. So okay. Wow, ten. Hold on, yeah. you rolled an eleven, didn't you? What did I? Roll? I'm sorry, I've just made my dice now. I think you no, rolled I was, an eleven. Um, so it's down to seven. Oh, sorry, so it's four then. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Spend oh. four luck. Drop your luck down by four, and so you just dodge her arm as she swings at you, but you're no longer between her and the the family. Um, the grandfather will turn and throw a punch at her. Um, and he misses, but she attacks back and hits him for one point of damage. Okay. Not so bad. Oh, he's got a lot of hit points. Good. Then Luther runs into the cabin, hits the throttle. Um... And yeah, so roll your piloting skill, please, Luther, as the creature tries to attack you as you go by it. All right. Uh, pilot both, 30%. Uh, <clears throat> 66. All right, so what is a. Uh, maybe I should spend some luck as well. Um, I have a hard success. Oh, fuck. Uh, right. Uh, a hard success. So fifteen. Well, that that blows all my. Actually, no, I can't even make it to my existing luck. Really? Okay. Uh, but so also, the hold boat hold takes eighteen d six damage. Wow. How much? Eighteen d six, but it's translated to build damage. So. Okay. Um, I think every ten points is a point of build, right? Yep. Okay. That was six dice. That was a total of ooh, okay. Okay. So what's that come to? Whew. Boat takes five build points of damage. Okay. That reduces the boat to zero build. <laughs> so the boat gets smashed and breaks in half. Everybody goes uh -huh. pitching into the water, except perhaps maybe Luther, who's at the wheel, who can hang on for a moment, but he'll soon be underwater anyway. Okay, so... Jeez. But the other boat is still floating, right? The small boat? No, that boat got pulled underwater. Yeah, that's gone. Oh, crushed. Yeah. Yeah, this is bad. Everybody got a life jacket? You all have life yeah. jackets. Oh, oh dear. All right. Dr. Steven, Howie Steven. gives out a glorious ululation. The gills on the side of her neck open up wide and she dives underwater. Disappearing no. from sight. Stephen. Stephen, I got you, Gia. Uh -huh. Oh no! We got life rafts. I'm guessing we've got an emergency inflatable life raft. Not that it's going to do as much good, but um, mm, emergency life raft isn't inflated. Is it one of those auto inflate ones? You know the ones you kind of. Oh, what's your luck? Oh, where's it going? I'm on. Um... Yes. No, I rolled low enough. I'm sure you got more than okay. 13 points. Yeah, 30, 36. Yes. And it is inflating and whoosh, popping up. Um, you know, you have to swim to it. Okay. You are on, on the water. The sea serpent is still there, and it quickly goes underwater. Oh, man. Um, you're going to need swim checks. And let me see here. First things first, I'll do this one by one. So let's go to Luther. Yep. Luther's a greedy cutthroat son of a bitch. I reckon he wouldn't care about anybody's safety but his own. Roll a luck sorry. roll, please, Luther. Okay. Um, um, failed again. Failed again? Roll yes. a d4, Luther. 
No, D3. Oh, okay. A D3. Three points. It'll take you three rounds to swim to the life raft. Oh. A little swimming check. That means three swimming checks as well. I should say it'll take you three successful swimming checks to get to the raft. You're not at risk of drowning because you do have a life vest on. Okay. So go ahead and roll me a swim check. Yep. Um, success. Success? Okay, so it'll take you two Nine more points. successful swim checks, so I'll come back to you next round. Doug, oh. roll a luck roll, please. If you can hear me, Lee. I cannot hear you. You're muted. Sorry, I've muted some. That's okay. So, yeah, yeah, about 25, I got under. You got under? Okay. Yeah. You can get to the life raft with one immediate successful swimmer. Roll me, please. Okay. So, swimmers. Yeah, I got 11. 11? Swim, Excellent. Yeah. yeah, you get into the boat immediately. Steven, you're helping Gia. Mm hmm. G is Correct. conscious though, right? So both of you yep. um actually no Steven, give me a luck roll. Because G has just been nothing but unlucky this whole game. So passed by twenty two. Okay. Um and you're assisting her. Um so mm -hmm. give me a hard swim test. I have a question before we do that. Mm -hmm. Can I see where the grandson and the grandfather is? Ah. Yes. Ooh. The grandfather is three swim checks away from the boat. The grandson is two swim checks away from the boat. I'm grabbing Gia, and I'm swimming as hard as I can to get us away from that lifeboat. Okay. <laughs> We've got vests on. Yep. Okay. Uh, give me a hard swim test, please. All right. Swim is 70. 48. You're a good swimmer. Yeah, you want to spend 13 luck to make that? I'm going to spend 13 luck to get that hard. Okay, success. so you pull her and you start swimming away from the life boat, which you were right next to. You're now swimming away from it. Uh, Gia, yep. you see him. He grabs you kind of by your life vest and starts swimming you away Come from with me. the, the lifeboat. Stephen, why Trust are we okay? Why? Okay. Trust Water me. splashing in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Stephen, I'll trust you. Okay. The grandfather um, swims up uh, towards the lifeboat. Boat. So does the grandson. The grandson is one swim check, one round away from the boat. The grandfather is two swim checks away from the boat. And the grandson screams and disappears underwater. And oh, Bill starts screaming, no, no, Peter, no. Oh, I'm going to dive in. If I can. Okay, you can dive back in. Um, what, what's your intention of diving in? You're, you're trying to find uh, him? To try, to try to get the kid, yeah. Okay. You quickly run into a big chunk of sea serpent body. Wow. That, you know, is it's massive. It's got a size of 880. Uh-huh. Oh. Um, yep. And then uh, the grandfather stops swimming towards the boat. Luther, you can roll another swim test to get closer to the boat. Yep. Uh, okay, I spend uh, 19 luck just to make it. Okay, spend 19 luck. You're now one round closer, so you're one more, one final swim check away from getting into the life raft, I should say. It's not much of a boat. Okay. Um, Okay, Doug has dived into the water. Steven and Gia, you continue swimming away. Well, I'm stuck. I'm just following Steven. And he's just kind of dragging you along. Steven, give me another hard swim test. Uh, Steven? Dave? <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> hard Steven? swim test. I, I, I was I was researching something. Okay. Um, um, what do I need to give you, dude? A hard swim test, please. Okay, I'm very sorry. I was looking up life vest transponders. Okay, hard swim test again. Here we go. Fifty. No. 
uh, I would like to spend 15 more luck to get it down to hard. Do. Okay, you okay. continue swimming away from the boat or the life raft with uh, with Gia in tow. I will start trying to swim myself now that I'm kind of. Okay. Doug, give me a power roll, please. Power roll. Because you are hit with a uh, like a psychic blast or something of some sort. Um, okay, power 40. Okay. Ooh, eight. Good. Okay, Ten. you resist. Uh, you feel it trying to stop you from your actions. Like it's trying to trying to stop you. Um, your resistance, if you will. Trying to placate you. Um, I'm going to try power on. <laughs> and Bill continues like trying to find his grandson, but there's no sign of him there. You're still underwater looking for the grandson? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the sea serpent moves much faster than you in the water. I assume. What's your movement? Um, oh, and you're wearing a life vest. It's hard to swim. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's much movement. faster than you. Yeah, move rate is eight, so I'm guessing that's quite a lot reduced. Yeah, it's faster, for sure. So yeah. it's pulling away from you. And those of you who are above the water will hear the boy screaming as the head rises up above the water, maybe 20 yards away. And you see the boy impaled on one of its teeth as it's grinding away on him. Oh, no. Uh, a bloody, gory mess. Quite painful and uh, torturous screams coming from the young boy's mouth. Bill is like screaming in rage and terror and grief um, as the creature slowly grinds the boy to death um, where you all can see and unfortunately hear it. Go Luther, on. give me another swim check, please. Success, 23. <clears throat> Made okay. it. Yep, you're, you're into the boat now. All right. All alone, Let's... apparently. <laughs> Um, okay. You get this life raft all to yourself, and yeah, you suddenly start... realize, well, you don't have any oars or anything, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to sink. Good. Ground. Well, at the moment, anyway. Can I can I drop behind the boat and start pushing it towards the, or is it going to be slower than actually just swimming? You're miles from shore, so. Hmm. Um. Yeah, you're probably better off um, waiting for um, rescue. Okay. Is there a box of flares in the uh, in the life, life raft? I imagine there would be, yeah, like a waterproof um, a waterproof pouch or something. Okay, I get in the boat and uh, It's probably start... got, um, what would be in there? I imagine it would have like a little radio, a handheld radio. Uh-huh. Do they make handheld radios with signals that strong? Does anybody have any knowledge? Maybe a Maybe. distress beacon or something. There's got to be something, right? Maybe. Yeah. They they have transponders. Transponders that you can put on there, and also the uh, life vest can be equipped with them. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And so they be are like really a transponder good. that you could turn on, and yeah, there'd be flares as well. Okay, I grab for the uh, flare gun and I unpackage. Uh, okay. Unwrap. Start flare loading gun. that. Yeah. Okay. Doug, uh, you got to come up for air. Yeah. And uh, realizing the life vest is inhibiting your ability to swim underwater. And once you do come for air, you'll hear the anguished cries of, of uh, Luther. And you'll look over and maybe see maybe uh, 60 feet away from you, the head of the monster there, just kind of swallowing the last remaining upper portion of the boy's tor torso. Oh, man, that sucks. Um... And then it looks in your direction <laughs> and it dives underwater again. Okay, I'm swimming for the biggest piece of boat or wreckage or life after I can see. Um, yeah, okay. Go ahead, uh, give me a, a swim check. You're only, um, yeah, you're only one swim test away from the actual raft. Okay. And the boy got 40. so close. Got That's 40. a success, right? Yeah. Yep, you get to the, the raft where Luther is loading up a flare gun. Okay, excellent. You see he's pulled out the emergency pouch and... Presumably activated the emergency transponder. Okay. Uh, Steven, still swimming away. Um, how far away are we from the lifeboat and all of this right now? 
you're now you were one round of swimming away. You're now two more rounds. You're three rounds of swimming away. So yeah, I'd like to keep swimming. With you. I, I am now. I I am kind of holding on, but I am now. Swimming. I'm gasping out well. to Gia. I could never sacrifice them. There's no way we're going to beat that thing. But I won't be part of sacrificing them. Bill's just the floating there in the water, um, crying. What are, we, what are we? What is? I don't understand. Steve. We have to save ourselves, dear. Uh, then the sea master to... rises up again. Sea master, sea monster, <laughs> rises up again out of the water, uh, grabbing Bill in its maw, right next to the uh, to the raft. So those of you on the raft, please make uh, dexterity checks to to remain in the raft as the gets kind of pushed away by the uh, the waves generated as this thing surfaces. Yeah, I've got a hard pass. Cool. Yep, you managed to stay in and keep the boat from capsizing. Yeah. Did you make your Barely. roll, Luther? Oh, there goes the flare gun into the water. <sighs> no. Oh, man. Oh, bummer. And now but... Bill is screaming as the creature slowly grinds and chews away on him. Oh, can I can I take a shot at Bill to try to put him out of his misery? With what? Oh, you have a pistol, a don't pistol? you? Yeah. Got a 357 uh, Magnum. He does, yeah. Yep, go for it. Let's have a go. So, I don't know if I'm not my thing. Let's see here. We're going to call this uh, a hard. Okay, so I've got to get 20 or under. That's okay. The bright side is if you miss, you probably hit the sea monster. Oh, I've got 22. Oh, so so, too yeah. Long. oh, yeah, I will. Uh, thank you. Yep. Yeah, I will. Bam, you blast him. Give me a damage roll. I think it's 1d8 plus um, 1d4 for 357. Four, so it's um, so seven. Nice. Yeah, that does him in because he was already pretty badly hurt. Oh. So you shoot him and he stops screaming. The creature swallows him. And glares down at you. Oh man, she's going to end badly, isn't it? Yeah. And then dives back underwater. Mm -hmm. And everything is quiet. <laughs> I'm just checking where everybody else is. You can see Stephen and Gia are swimming away from you. Uh, well, Gia, I'd like to Gia stop for a minute. Stop. Just, yeah, they're, 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 trying, they're attempting there. to swim deeper out to sea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but at least you're together. That's it. There's obviously Bill and uh, Peter are gone. The captain, you see him uh, floating unconscious. Uh, but he's, you know, like on his back, life raft is doing its job. He's looks to be breathing, but he's unconscious. He has blood coming from his head. It looks like he hit his head in the, uh, when the boat got wrecked. Um, uh, is there any no chance, of Doctor Howie? So the the wreckage is it like uh, wooden boards or what, what kind of wreckage is it? Because I'm only I want to find yeah, there'd some... be some boards that would come aboard, come you know, floating up and bits and pieces. Um, because for the most part, the boat was just ripped into two pieces, mm -hmm. um, which I imagine would pretty much sink. But there are loose pieces that broke away, you know. So there'd be some some wreckage, some debris floating up. Oh, your coolers probably float up. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> um, Egan, um, if we stop swimming and just float there. Mm -hmm. I want to improvise quiet. some oars. Can I improvise some oars to start pedaling? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, you could probably. You guys could use your hands anyway in the water and kind of move towards and get some boards then to kind of use. Yeah, absolutely. And what were you going to say, Stephen? Um, like to stop Gia. And just hang on, and we're just floating there, looking at the calm, waiting to see if anything happens. Um, can we see Dr. Uh, Howie? No. Anywhere? No sign of her anywhere. All right. Last time you saw her, she dove underwater. Leave. Gia, I think we're safe. Shall we swim back and help them? Uh, I'm just sticking with you, Stephen. So if that's what we should you think we feel something do, brush up against your leg, Gia. Oh, God damn it. And you see a large shadow uh, under the water. Looks uh, rather shark shaped. Stephen, 
Stick on. Stick on. Stick on. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Give me a luck roll, Gia. No. <laughs> <laughs> 29 out of 50. Good, you're not menstruating. Oh. <laughs> uh. But there is most certainly something there. A shark swimming around. Fortunately, you're not bleeding. Steven, give me a luck roll. Okay. Oh, yeah. I spent that down to 37. Awesome. Ooh. This is Here we go. when people spend luck. 24. Okay, you're not bleeding either from your injuries taken aboard the boat or anything, so no. Sweet. So the shark is not going to move our legs or one of you. Let's just not move our legs or anything. Luther and Doug managed to scrap up bits of, of wooden, you know, rubble, um, debris, sorry, uh, yeah. from the boat, well, improvise oars out of them. Doug, Doug, come. Come pick us up, please. I'm okay. Okay. I'm, just, I'm making a, a sign just to keep quiet. And so, oh, thumbs up. We're coming towards you. Is there anything left from the uh, box with the flares? Are there any individual flares, maybe, or did everything go overboard? Um, no, you lost the gun and the flare you were trying to load into it. You still have a couple of individual flares, for sure. Okay. Maybe even five. Okay. I'd say there was half a dozen in there. Okay. It was just the loaded flare gun that you dropped. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so give me, let's see here. Yeah, all of you give me luck rolls. Okay. Yay. 50 on 50. Whew. Let me know if anybody gets an extreme success. Ooh. Got no nines. Uh, I haven't, no. No. No? no. Hard success. You got an 09, you said, Doug? Yeah. What is your luck at? Uh, my luck is currently at 35. Oh, that's not an extreme success, so no. no. I got okay. an extreme failure at 97. Ooh. Ooh. It was good knowing you, baby. Um, Luckily, I'm not holding on to you at the minute. <laughs> Save yourself. So no extreme successes and one extreme failure. Okay. So you guys paddle and paddle and paddle. Um, you're quite exhausted, dehydrated, and uh, hungry. Um, oh, the um, you, oh, the extreme failure? Yeah, that shark that decided to leave Steve and Gia alone takes the captain. Oh, man. But the four yeah. of you, of course, eventually get into the raft, the other two. Um, <laughs> That was an and awful thing to do. <laughs> since your boat doesn't return to harbor, um, an alert will go out. And that evening, that night after dark, you're able to use the flare gun to draw the attention of a helicopter patrolling the area looking for any wreckage. And uh, you eventually get picked up by the Coast Guard, Oy. which bring you back uh, to, to Salem. Uh. Now, what do you tell the authorities that happened? Where's Dr. Howie and Captain Mascari? We've got we've got no bodies. No, you don't. So we don't have to explain any bodies. Um, what happened? Our boat, to you? our boat was rammed by this old guy with his young child. They were both drunk and they hit our boat and there was an explosion and everybody uh, some of the people fell overboard and because we were tracking sharks they were eaten and it's as simple as that Can you corroborate this story Doug? I, I, I guess uh, um, I guess my problem, only problem with that bus is um, they're going to find pieces of a boat and it's not going to look like an explosion it's just going to be wrecked but uh, well, I, think, I, th I think otherwise, I think that's that's not a it's not a bad bad line to take. I can't I can't see the um I can't see anybody sort of taking this seriously. 
Ian, in the investigation, will they confiscate our electronics? Even my drowned phone has some footage on it if they didn't completely destroy it. That's a good point. Give me another luck roll, Stephen. Oh, Come dear. Stephen. Uh-huh. Here we go. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Muted. That would be a 100. No, <laughs> you don't have your phone. Double lot. Your phone's gone. Damn. Uh, Luther, give me a, a luck roll, please. A uh, luck roll. Uh, uh, I will just keep failed. Quiet. <laughs> yeah, you lost your phone at C2. Oh, okay. Huh. Well, who's going to start diving for phones? So, um, Stephen and Gia, are you going to go along with the story that the drunken um, fisherman crashed into your boat, wrecking both of them, and uh, sharks took um, the doctor and the captain? I'd probably go along with it. I just wouldn't say there was an explosion. I'd say the impact right. of the boat. Kind of... You guys have time waiting for rescue to work yeah. on your story. That makes sense. So we're going to forgo the explosion to say it was, yeah, wreck? That's, yeah. what, that's what Geo would probably Okay. for. Then you will be um, allowed to return to your lives after, uh, you know, of course, being checked out at hospital to make sure that uh, you're okay. Um, I need psycho. I need to get to a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Mascari and Doctor Aaron Howie will be mourned. Uh, a great loss to the conservation efforts of great white sharks here in the uh, Salem area. Um, but perhaps one day a bright new uh, marine biology uh, graduate may uh, may take her take her place. Right. Chien, right to you? Yes. Maybe. Yes. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> me, me and me and Stephen will. <laughs> oh hell no! I'm dropping out of college, getting drunk, and probably committing suicide at some point. Yeah. No, I, I, no, I probably will end up not doing marine biology because I'll go to a psychologist and end up like taking something that's nothing to do with biology. <laughs> wow! No, completely changing your career altogether. I Doug never sets foot on the boat again. So. Oh, I I did like I started with like forty five sanity. I'm like yep, you end up working in IT. <laughs> <laughs> you end up working in IT, Stephen. You have the intelligence. You, you go the so. route of dropping out of college and becoming a drunkard and either falling, falling into suicide. depression and yeah. I, I yeah. tried to help Stephen. I keep in contact with Stephen, but I'm or I might a... I might go live in the desert as a hermit with a lot of guns. <laughs> Like, like that couple on trimmers. <laughs> what about you, Luther? Oh, I just take a couple of pointers from the great sea monster. I become even more aggressive in my accounting. And next time I book a fishing trip, I go to the West Coast. Nice. Doug? I think uh, Doug doesn't set foot on the boat again and ends up drinking with Mike. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. That that was a short one, but that's all I have for... Uh... <laughs> hey. Cool. You're gonna call up that which you cannot put down. <laughs> we all live. Fantastic. We all live. <laughs> I will. Uh, yeah, you did all live. So I will. Uh, you, you you don't get any sanity rewards because uh, of the death toll. Uh, Definitely. Four NPCs died. Four PCs lived. Well, sorry. Technically, three NPCs died. The other NPC went to live underwater with her kin. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, she was a deep one. A deep one, kind of. Uh, descendant or whatever but um yeah cool i will stop the recording but i'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have